Do you wish that your Airtable forms could do more? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you a third-party tool called Fillout that integrates natively with Airtable, allowing you to take your forms to the next level. And in this particular video, we're gonna be taking a look at the pre-fill form option, meaning that you are pre-filling information inside of your form based on certain parameters, certain conditions that you've established. So if learning about this is of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting and we make it our mission to help you get more organized and automated using no-code tools. Airtable is at the forefront of these no-code tools and if you really wanna to go to the next level with your forms, Airtable native forms aren't always enough. You're gonna love Fillout. If you are new to Fillout, I would simply ask that you check out our affiliate link below to show some love back to the channel when signing up for the tool. They do have a free option, but of course you're gonna get more on their paid plans as you upgrade. Now before we get into the heart of the video, I want to invite you to master the fundamentals of Airtable. If you're a new Airtable user and you're really trying to get the most out of the tool, maybe it is worth visiting for you all the key features of the tool, which I will put together for you in my Airtable crash course. Sign up for that crash course at garethpronovost.com slash Airtable dash crash dash course and you can have that delivered directly to your inbox over the series of about a week. So without further ado though, let's go ahead and hop into the heart of this. We're gonna first start with taking a quick look at our Airtable structure, nothing too fancy here. I've got two example tables. Table one has name, notes, status, and a link to table two. Over here in table two, I just have a name and the link to table one. I'm gonna call this thing one. I'm gonna create a couple of these just so we have some things to point at, literally. Thing one, thing two, thing three now exist inside of table two. And that's really it for my initial structure here. I wanna hop into fill out and start working with the tool. So I'm gonna pop into here and just start creating a new form from scratch. And you'll notice that Airtable is one of their preferred form options up front. And so if you already have the structure in Airtable, it eliminates the need to go step by step and build out your form. We're gonna plug right into that database with using this option right here. So I'm gonna say Airtable form. Let's go ahead and make that selection here. And then we're asked to pick a theme. We can uh, use one of the default ones, which I'll do in the nature of expediency here. And you can of course customize this as much or as little as you would like. So I'll take this cheerful theme and we will say next. And now it's gonna ask about that Airtable connection. I've already established my connection to Airtable through the API here. If you haven't done that yet, you'll have to add new and go through the steps on your screen. Once you've established that connection, we can move on to the next step, which is selecting the Airtable database that's gonna be reflected in this form. Let's go ahead and make that selection. My base is called fillout.com example. So let's go ahead and check it out, see if I can find it just by searching, here it is. So I've got fillout example. Let's go ahead and select my table that I want to have reflected in this form. Now this is the table that we're gonna be writing data to. So if we go quickly back to our data structure here in Airtable, it was table one where I have the name, the notes, the status, and the link to table two that I want to create new records in. So it's table one that I actually wanna to refer to here when I'm building out my form. Let's go ahead and make that selection and then we say create form. Now it's gonna give us a default name here of my Airtable form one. I think this might actually be my second form and fill out. So I'm gonna call it two and continue. Oh, nope, this is my third one. So let's go ahead and make a third one and continue. So now there we are. I can now start adding elements to the form itself. In our example here on the left-hand side, you'll see the Airtable fields that are already known to us because we have them in our Airtable base. Those different fields are name, notes, we have a link to table two, and we have a status. Now the thing that we also have here are some extras, some extra things that don't necessarily live inside of Airtable, but we can include in our form. Things like a banner, a video, a divider, images, etc. But you can see how easy it was for us to just add those elements to our form that are related to Airtable. My name field is here, my notes field, my table. And if we look here, we're gonna see the options that we created inside of table two, the three different records, one, two, and three. 
Similarly, notes, it's just a long text field. Here's a big place where we can drop in some text. This is a short text field, little spot here where we can just drop in a line of text. And of course, with our status, we have three different options to do in progress or done. And only one of them can be selected at a time because this is a single select field. So a lot of fun things that are already known by Fillout because of that integration to Airtable. But what we wanna really focus on here is how can we pre-fill this form? I want this form to be pre-filled so that when somebody goes to it, it's already filled out with some specific information. So how can I work that out? Let's take a look at our name field to start. I can select that field and go into the field settings and that will either open or close the settings on the right side of the screen. So here we have the basic elements of the field itself. So we can add a caption if we'd like here. We can add a placeholder which is going to have that little text inside of the actual field here. So this is like example text. We could even set that default value. And so this is where we can start pre-filling this information. By hitting on add reference to default value, you'll see that we get three different options in this case. We have the page options, we have the URL parameters option, and we have date utilities. So let's take a look at these one by one. Now page is going to allow us to bring in data that exists somewhere else on this actual form. So for example, if we'd filled out something on the form that we needed repeated in other areas of the form, we could automatically fill that information out by using this page reference. So if we had put name multiple places in this particular form, then you could imagine how we would have them fill out the name once and then auto populate that information through referencing the same field on the page. So that's page reference. URL parameters gets a little stickier. Looking at these, we don't have any of these configured yet. So let's go over to configure some URL parameters and figure out how these all work together. So first we have to register the URL parameters that we need. It says that you can then use them to prefill fields or personalize your form. And of course, there's a nice little tutorial here to help. But let's go ahead and add our first URL parameter. I'm gonna set up a key and call this name for client, just as an example. And my test value here that will be used in the editor will be XYZ client. Now this is just a test value, but let's go ahead and take this out for a spin. We're first going to save and it is now saved and we can add this element to our form. So let's go ahead and flip back to our form now and we're gonna go back to that default value and plug in that URL parameter. And what you'll see here is now this parameter that we established called name for client. And so we can just insert this here and what we're doing is we're taking the name for client out of the URL of the form and we're going to pre-fill that information into the form itself. But how does this work? Well, let's see how we can actually share this form in just a moment. Now, before we move on, let's take a look at the other option for pre-filling a form. I'll go into a different field here, in this case, our notes field, and we'll again go to default value here in the settings, and we'll look at date utilities. This allows me to plug in dates. For example, if you're collecting an invoice from somebody and you wanna pre-fill this information with today's date, you can do that. But of course, also leave them the option to change that date if they missed a day or meant to submit it earlier. You don't only have to access today's actual date, but of course you can refer to other dates around today, such as yesterday, tomorrow, a month from now, end days from now, etc. So you have this option when messing with the dates, pre-filling certain date information in relation to today's actual date, which is a pretty cool feature. Now, one other consideration is that you might have other steps inside of your form as it's being filled out. Maybe information existed in previous pages of the form that we don't have for our example just yet. So let's go ahead and set something up like that. We can add a page in the bottom of our setup here. I can actually add a page to collect user input, such as just a standard form page. I can also have a cover page. I could have a login page, a scheduling page. This allows people to actually schedule time on your calendar or log in using specific parameters. So we could set up and confirm that they are who they are supposed to be or who they say they are. Make sure that they're supposed to have access to this form. If we enter something like this and bring in this element to our form, 
which of course I haven't fully set up yet, but if we were to do that and we go back into our form itself, we actually see an additional option here in our pre-fill options. For in this example, we can actually bring in information from the login page. So if I were to fully set up that login page, because it's previously existing in the workflow of our form, we can bring it in on our fill out form so that we're passing information throughout the form process. So those are your options when pre-filling a form, but as I promised, we have to revisit how do we reference this name for client field that we built over here? Well, in order to really understand it, let's go back into our page URL parameters. Now in our example, first we identified this new pre-fill element and we called it name for client, all lowercase, and it was with underscores in between. So let's go ahead and first publish our form and then we're going to add to the end of that what we want that value to be. So we will go ahead and first share our form, publish the form here in fill out, and now we are good to go. So we can go ahead and use this and actually because of the fact that we've already set up that parameter, we see it here in the form link. So. This part of the form before the question mark is the actual form itself. Following this is the question mark that's saying we are going to now pass through our little URL parameter and whatever follows that is going to be what shows up in that pre-fill element. So let me just copy this whole thing, but before I move on, I actually have to go back to my form itself because I don't actually have that login established. Let's delete the login page and go back to share here and now copy this once again. Now I can open up a new window in my browser and paste that in and now just go down to my form and it said I have a submission in progress probably through my previous uh, testing. So let's just start again here and see where it takes me. Now we see that it's being filled out with that client information because of the fact that we already included it inside of our example. But what if we wanted to change this so that every time we clicked on it, it was different? Well, that's where Airtable is going to come in really handy for us. So let's go ahead and flip on over here and imagine that maybe we wanted to fill that out differently every time somebody filled it out. Well, now I'm going to create a new table called table three and we're going to let this load. What I envision here is that we are going to fill out this client information for each of our clients. So let's first pop back into Airtable and imagine that we create a third table here for our clients. So I'm going to call this table clients, just add a new table to the database. I'm going to delete these fields because I don't need the fields that automatically start here. And I want to fill out the client name. So I will say stuff like Acme Co and Bravo Co and I'll have Delta Co. So now I have a bunch of different pieces of information here in my client's table. Now, how can I pre-fill that URL for all of them? Well, let's go ahead and create the form and we're gonna just use a URL field here. And what I'm going to do is actually just include the thing that I copy and pasted in the last piece, which is the full name for this form, including the name for client. But here's where I want it to be different in the name for the client itself, I want this to change every time based on what I have for my client here. So I will actually remove this part and I'll just keep it at the equal sign. Now anything I add after this is going to be filled out with that client information. So let's go ahead and now build a formula that will use the URL that we just put into our form and append it with the client name. So in order to do this, we'll write a quick concatenate and we will first reference the form URL that we created in the previous field. But after that, we want to immediately then include the name of the client. But in each case, we also need to be sensitive to URL parameters. If there are spaces or other special characters inside of the name that we created, it's not going to fill out correctly in a URL. To get around this, we can use the encode URL component. And this allows us to first encode whatever the name is inside of URL parameters, and then we can include that at the end of the form URL. So let's go ahead and create this field and you'll see what I mean. So here, instead of a space, we have the percent 20 in place of Bravo Co or Delta Co. This way we are able to encode that as a URL. And now I can share these URLs 
and they're unique in each case, and they're going to be pre-filled with my client information. So for Delta Co, this is their specific link. I can share that with them. When they click on it, they'll be taken to this page, and as you see, it's already filled out with that information. Now, one other thing to note here is that we can also hide this information and still record it appropriately. So let's head back to our fill out form. I wanna go back to the form itself. And now that I've tested that this pre-fill element works, let's also hide the field. So I can go down to logic here and I can say hide always, but will it still be filled out with the pre-filled information? And can we still capture that information? Let's find out. Now, before I revisit this, I have to first publish my changes. So go to the upper right corner and publish. And now I'm gonna go ahead and swing back into my Airtable setup. And I'm going to access this form on behalf of Bravo Co. I will click Bravo Co's specific link. And in the URL, I'm passing along the Bravo Co information, but on their behalf, I'll fill out the following. One, two, three. Thing one, to do. Nowhere on this form do you see that I'm filling this out for Bravo Co. But when I submit it and I flip back into my Airtable and I go to my new table one here, you're going to see that I received that form filled out and even though we didn't see it on the form, we passed along that information for Bravo Co. So this is a great way for you to pre-fill information on forms and then even hide that information so that people can't change it, but you can still capture it at that form submission. I know that we went into a lot of detail on this. There's obviously a lot to unpack inside of fill out and this is just the beginning. So if you enjoy videos like this, be sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments below. That's it for this one. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. In the meantime, keep on building. Um, I don't think I want to do that. Are you kidding me today? I'm so sorry.